Hi guys, it's Debbie, and a few years ago I started watching Indian films. Um, those of you who have been following me for a while know I don't really like the term world cinema, which basically just takes everything that isn't Hollywood, lumps it up into one single category labelled as other. This definitely doesn't help people in finding many great foreign titles, so I hope here on my channel I'm, I'll be able to share some interesting suggestions with you. What I find particularly interesting about Indian productions is just how vastly varied they are. While most countries produce films following a more or less similar path and even area of production, the vastness of India and its cultural diversity means there is Bollywood for the Hindi movies, but also Tollywood for the Telugu movies, Kollywood for the Tamil films, Malayam cinema, Kannada cinema. Of course because of time restrictions and sometimes the struggle to actually find a specific film with subtitles, I haven't been able to watch dozens of them, but I would like to share with you what I thought of some of the titles I watched over the course of the years. Before we do that, because many of you who follow me are from India, I actually have a full spreadsheet of all the Indian film recommendations I have received and collected over the years in order of popularity. At the top we have two sagas, KGF 1 and 2, Two, followed by Bahubali 1 and 2. Then we have Vikram followed by Sardar Udam and just below that is Pushpa the Rise. I was surprised Gangs of Wasipur was so down in the list as I thought it was one of the most popular titles and of course if you have any suggestions I will add them to the list. Anyway getting back to us the first Indian film I watched was Dangal which I wouldn't say was as popular as RR but I have a feeling that the reason why it ended under my right radar was because it was pretty popular in the West and I have a feeling it might also have to do with the fact that Disney was involved in distribution so it might have been pushed a little more over here. Anyway, I really like Dangal. It's the true story of a retired pro wrestler who trains his daughters to also become professional wrestlers and the film shows the two sides to the situation. On the one hand, we have the possibility of becoming famous sports champions. We have a loving father who is doing what he believes will give the best future to his daughters. On the other hand, we have the stigma of choosing a more masculine path and the hardship of having to go along with this plan regardless of your personal choice. If you've seen the more recent film King Richard with Will Smith it kind of has that same vibe of the strict father who might even cross lines but who in the end just wants the best for his daughters. The protagonist of this film is portrayed by Amir Khan and when I discovered him, it opened a whole new world. I had no idea how popular this actor is and how influential he is on Indian and worldwide cinema. So I went down a rabbit hole and watched quite a few more of his films. One of them was Three Idiots, probably one of Khan's most famous films. I wasn't expecting this film to hit so hard and I think I was probably deceived by the super jolly and funny promotional material. In this film, Amir Khan portrays a jolly prankster who joins university and basically brings it along a of chaos with him and by befriending two schoolmates the titular three idiots are formed. So the film opens in a very funny way, it's even sort of promoted as following the Ferris Bueller concept and then it just throws at you some of the most gut-wrenching scenes ever. Because unfortunately India has a big problem with students feeling the pressure of society, of their families, of the school to excel, to just make it. And the pressure is so big that unfortunately it sometimes has some very negative consequences. Another Amir Khan film I didn't expect to hit that hard was PK. PK is the story of an alien who lands on planet Earth and doesn't know anything about how our, our society works. He befriends a young woman who teaches him a, a bit about our world and this film made me realise how stupid so many things are in our modern society. And this film was released in 2014 so imagine how much more idiotic stuff would have been added if it was set in present times. Because if you look at a lot of the things we dedicate our times to, we fight about, the things we give importance to from the perspective of an outsider, nothing really makes sense. Religion, wealth, some aspects of relationships, it just makes you think about many things from a different perspective. And the last Amir Khan film I watched is Tared Zamin Par, translated to Like Stars on Earth, in which Again, we have Khan in a school setting like Three Idiots, but this time as a teacher. The protagonist of this film is a little boy who has an extremely creative mind, a very vivid imagination, but who struggles with keeping up at school because of dyslexia. His parents don't really understand him and make matters even worse by sending him off to a boarding school where already he has his own struggles, but then feels very lonely and lost. And the only person that really helps him is Amir Khan's teacher figure. Although Amir Khan is one of the most popular Indian actors, I've only seen these four films of his so please let me know if you have some more suggestions. For example I was quite curious about his new film Lal Singh Chadda 
which is um, the remake of Forrest Gump, but I'm scared that there will be too many references to India's history, just like in Forrest Gump with America, which I won't understand, so let me know about that. Moving on, there are some of my favourite Indian films. Uh, the first is Andadun, which I have said countless times is the kind of film that made in Hollywood would have been way more popular. Anyway, Andadun means blindtude as the protagonist is a blind pianist, but who isn't blind. Basically, he pretends to be blind once while playing and this kind of leads him to having to keep up the act. The real beginning of the story is that one day he is a witness of a murder scene, but everybody thinks he hasn't seen anything because of his blindness. Of course, this leads him to having to keep up the act of uh, pretending to be blind, which is pretty tough, as well as having to avoid all the consequences of having been present at that crime scene, all while the plot just keeps twisting and turning. I wouldn't say this film is on an inception level of mind-blowingness, but it really does prove that you don't need Hollywood to create good gripping stories. Another Indian film I loved watching was Super Deluxe, again one of those titles that uh, for those who, who have that general Bollywood dance um, idea of films in their mind could never imagine. Super Deluxe involves different storylines, different characters which are somehow interwoven and I'm going to try to put this out without spoilers. One of the first characters we meet is a father who shocks his family by suddenly returning home after years as a trans woman. The other characters are a group of teenage friends who get together to watch a porn video only to find out there's something more to it and then we have a confused array of people, husbands, wives, secret partners cheating and without spoilers the whole story comes together. The feature I've always appreciated the most about this film is the colour palette and the cinematography. There are many scenes that are specifically set up to enhance the feeling of the plot twists. Now around that same time I panicked a little because I had always been scared that I wouldn't have been able to enjoy Indian movies because the cultural background was just um, too different. And I think something along those lines happened with Tumbad, a horror movie. Now to be fair, Tumbad is really scary. The locations, the creatures, the whole atmosphere. I love the whole build up in the opening sequence, uh, the idea of gods and creatures and hidden treasures. But when I watched it, I felt like I was missing out on something. And some of you told me that it's just because I don't get the cultural background and the references. I just think I need to watch this film again because I googled it and it's not actually based on anything real. So maybe, I don't know, I just wasn't feeling it that day. For example, RRR is also based on real life figures, but there were no issues with me watching that. RRR is probably the most popular film on this list and definitely the most popular in the West. As a matter of fact, I hope its popularity in the West will bring more attention to Indian films in the future. It was released last summer and it was massive, even made it into my best films of 2022 list. RRR is the story of two men from widely different backgrounds whose lives connect when a little girl is kidnapped from her village by some nasty individuals from the British Raj. And the rest of the film is this epic chase between these two men, one who is trying to find the girl and the other who is looking for him. They are enemies, but they also figure out they have a lot in common. I will leave the link to my full review of the movie because there is way too much to talk about here. There had already been another peak of interest for Indian movies in the West, even thanks to Netflix, the previous year with uh, The White Tiger, but I wouldn't say it was on the same level as RRR. The White Tiger is the story of an Indian man who works as a driver and overall assistant to a wealthy family but he has this strong desire to make it one day to finally become rich and the story is about his struggles to achieve that because there is not only the concept of financially making it but the protagonist shows how um, the help are just inherently considered inferior, n to not even be acknowledged, to, to not even be spoken to or touched. So it's a much deeper social struggle than just simply making the money. And there is one very dark scene which I th in the film which I think perfectly encapsulates that whole idea. Earlier I was mentioning RR and many of you have been sending in recommendations by director SS Rajamouli and I watched another film of his, Eager, which means fly. The fly in the film is a man who after being murdered comes back to life as a fly and tries to carry out vengeance for what happened to him. If you liked the over dramatic shots and slow motions and animal features in RR, you'll probably also like Eager, also because it's from the same cinematographer KK Sentil Kumar. Then more recently I've been watching more drama movies with uh, down-to-earth stories because I like how they depict 
the real Indian lifestyle. One I've spoken about quite recently on my channel is The Lunchbox, starring the late Irfan Khan. In this film, he uses the Dabawala delivery service, which is a very famous and highly efficient food delivery service, which mostly caters to workers during their lunch break. Although this service is supposed to be infallible, something goes wrong one day, orders get swapped, and our protagonist ends up eating the lunch a random woman had prepared for her husband. The two soon get in contact through messages hidden in the lunchbox, and this film is beautiful, touching, and it shows how food sometimes is a means to bond and not just your X amount of fuel for the day. Another film I watched quite recently is Sir. Uh, the story of a woman who is left without anything after the death of her husband in her village. She is eventually hired as a domestic helper for a very wealthy man with which she has nothing in common, a little like in The White Tiger, but they slowly get closer and closer and find that they actually have things in common. What I loved about this film is the build-up of the relationship, but not in an overdramatic, exaggerated fashion but slowly, even just a thank you at a time. And another much older Indian film I watched is Fire, which released in 1996 was one of the first Indian films to explicitly cover um, gay relationships. As a matter of fact, the two protagonists are both women stuck in unhappy relationships for different reasons and end up finding comfort in one another. Unfortunately, at the time, this film created a lot of controversy, even with people storming cinemas, destroying material related to the film, and even sometimes setting fire to theatres that were screening the film. But on the flip side, because of this film's popularity, many believe it encouraged members of the LGBT community in India to become more vocal about their rights. Anyway, these are the main Indian films I watched. I don't think I will uh, talk about the time I started watching Indian Prime video and gave up on it about 15, 20 minutes into the film. But if you do have more suggestions, please send them my way and I will add them to my spreadsheet. And of course, I would love to hear what you think about these titles I spoke about today. So make sure to leave a comment down below. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.